Welcome to the exploiting simple buffer overflows on Win32 series at Pentester Academy. Now we are going to look at a jump EAX and a call EAX technique. Basically still working on micro P, the vulnerable application for which we found bad characters in the last video. So let's jump right in. Now, one of the things you'd actually notice uh, if you click on the exploit DB link, which is provided here on the slide, uh, is that the author of the vulnerability, well, pretty much has not provided any bad character set in here, right? And he's of course given you the shell code right away. And this is what you would end up finding in a lot of cases. And at the very same time, he may have worked on a different version of Windows. So he's worked on Windows XP, SP2, while we are working exclusively on SP3. Now this can cause differences in addresses, offsets, and other interesting variations, right? And he's used the message box shell code. So here is what I'm going to do. Step one, let me actually generate shell code. So MSF Venom. Hyphen P Windows message box. Let's go with the default settings. Hyphen F C architecture x86. The bad character set is 0x000, 0x0A, 0x0D. So this will give us the shell code we desire. Okay. Let's copy this out. And let me paste it inside exploit.py. Right, let me actually define it on top in here. Let's call it shell code. Now let's create the exploit buffer. So here is what I'm going to do. Uh, we overwrite the return address after 1276 bytes, right? So let me actually break this up. First, let's put in a nope sled. Let's say 24. Then let's actually put in the shell code. And then let's pad the remaining with nopes once again. So one, two, seven, six minus length of the buffer currently, right? And we can now comfortably remove this line. This shouldn't matter. There we go, right? So let's actually verify this hypothesis that at the time of the crash currently when EIP would have 42, 42, 42, 42, uh, all of this is actually set properly in the buffer, right? So let me run exploit.py, you run it, go back in here, debug, restart, run the application, select the file, and clearly see there was an error. Let's follow this in dump. So we begin with our nope sled in here. And our shell code pretty much ends in here, right? 2CB90E, you can verify this by going back in here, right? 2CB90E is where it ends. And then you have your nope sled once again, right? 
fantastic. So which means now our shell code, everything is perfectly there on the stack, or oh, sorry, uh, you know, in memory. And at this point, EAX is the one pointing to it. So you can well imagine in the previous exercise, we basically did a jump ESP to actually jump to our shell code in uh, memory pointed to by ESP. In this case, we may have to do a jump EAX or alternately a call EAX, right? Either of which has the same effect of transferring control uh, of the execution to the memory location currently stored within EAX. So we'll go through the exact same process, click on executable modules. Uh, you can try a number of them. I'll go for my favorite one, user32. And you could search for call EAX. So here we have one call EAX, 66E8417E, okay. Let's put that in. So I'm going to go down in here, replace this with 66 E841 E841 7 E 66 E841 7 E looks right so let's go ahead start the program create the new MPL, MPPL file open it up and if you notice the hello from msf the message box automatically popped up which means our shell code had executed fantastic now there's a way by which we can ensure that in the debugger as soon as our shell code starts to run uh, we automatically hit a breakpoint and the way to do that is basically to add 0xcc just before our shell code I leave this to you as an exercise to figure out what 0xcc is and what it does. So let me restart the program. Just remember to execute it to generate the new MPPL file. Now if you notice, basically we've hit a breakpoint and it says int3 right and this was basically cc you can google about it and you know why it ended up causing a software breakpoint and this is really where our shell code is beginning right you have the nope sled and this is where the real shell code begins and hit play we get our message box as expected now, alternate option, of course, was to do the jump EX. So again, could go in here, search for a jump EX. It's at 6B91. Six B ninety one forty two seven E Now let's try this again. Right. You once again hit the int3 
and we get our message box here. Fantastic. Right, so in this case, jump EX, call EX, pretty much both of them are equivalent. Now we can run it without the debugger also, just to verify that everything is running fine. Uh, one thing which you need to remember is if you're running it by itself, you can't have 0x CC in it because it ends up breaking in there. So we're just going to remove this line, hit our exploit, go back in here, open it up, and there you go, right? You could have had other shell code in here as well, depending on what you would like to achieve. Fantastic. So hopefully you enjoyed this exercise of finding bad characters and then looking at the jump call EX technique uh, to redirect control to your shell code and finally to uh, go ahead and exploit the system. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you're having fun at Pentester Academy, then please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.